here we go. Captain's log, stardate 57931.4. The crew is restless. After spending too many months piecing our ship back together, we're finally about to venture out on a new mission. And the crew isn't letting this unprecedented ion storm slow them down. They're ready for something different. Well, I am. Perhaps more than any of them. Fortunately, nothing ever stays the same. It's entropy. The nature of the universe. Change is inevitable. And while entropy says order gives way to chaos, in this case, change is good. Our new first officer is en route to the Resolute, Jara Ryden. I know she'll bring a welcome dose of new blood to the crew. with flying but these little shuttles are the worst here's a tip don't close your eyes you'd think that would make it easier but it only makes it worse look out the window pick a star and just focus on that I'll give it a try Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little anxious. I hadn't noticed. I'm on my way to my first assignment. When we get to the Starbase, I'm transferring on to the Resolute. So am I. It won't be easy for Chara to step in at the 11th hour like this. But if she's half the officer I knew she could become when she was a cadet at Starfleet Academy, she'll be the XO this ship needs right now. Starbase on the very edge of Federation space. Long way from home now. Uh, Commander? I'm not usually such a nervous wreck, by the way. I actually did well at the Academy. Oh, yeah? Maybe you've heard of the Torvalon test? Sounds familiar. It's a tactical simulator that makes the Kobayashi Maru look like a picnic on Pintar's fire. <coughs> anyway, I finished in the top 20. Not just in my class, I, I mean all time, in the history of the Academy. So, there's that. Only top 20, huh? So I guess there's room for improvement. Well, it's really, really hard. So I've heard.
place your hand here. Hold it there for a few seconds. Welcome, Commander Rydek. Wait, you're Jara Rydek? You absolutely crushed the Torvalon test. You, you finished in what, like the top three? That would be me. <laughs> now I'm really... It, it's an honor to meet you, Commander. Sorry, I, I didn't realize before. I, I just came off the shuttle and was glad to be on solid ground. When people say top three, what they really mean is third place. I'm well, not first, so there's always room for improvement. I'll, uh, keep working then. I believe Commander Ermod is expecting you. He's in the concourse just ahead. See you on the Resolute. Good day, Commander. If I remember my briefing, Commander Ermont is a bullion, so I'm looking for someone with blue skin. Starbase 128 has four docks. I'll replicate myself a meal once I'm on board. Excuse me. Welcome to the edge of the galaxy, Commander Ryder. I'm Commander Jan Ermott, Operations Officer on the Resolute. Commander? I hope there wasn't too much trouble getting here. This storm isn't making anything easy for us right now. It was a bit bumpy, but otherwise okay. Oh, my apologies. This storm is unlike anything I've seen before. We're grateful you were able to come fill our first officer vacancy at such short notice. From everything I've read and everything I've heard, we're lucky you were available to us. Coming from a premier starship and all. To our little research vessel. What exactly have you heard about me? First in your class at the Academy. Received the Starfleet Award of Valor during the Dominion War. Most recently, Tactical Officer and Chief of Security on the USS Endeavor. You've done your homework. Like I said, we're very lucky. The USS Resolute. She may not look like much compared to the bigger ships, but as far as science vessels go, she can more than hold her own. And she doesn't look so bad considering six months ago she was nearly cracked in half, venting plasma, fighting for her life. It was an accident? The equipment malfunction. An accident suggests fault, but no one's to blame. It was a planned test, but the warp core was pushed beyond its limits. It destabilized the dilithium, there was a runaway reaction, and the warp bubble deformed. We thought we could reach a higher resonant frequency, but it was more than she could handle. Cost us our first officer and 22 of our crew. At the end of the day, we're all responsible for each other. To have lost so many lives. That's a high price to pay. Too high by any estimation. But there's nothing that can be done about it now except get back to work. And make sure it never happens again. Listen. I realize you've known Captain Solano for quite some time. 
And I'm sure you're ready to bring your best. But I should warn you that when the captain announced you would be the new first officer, there were those who felt it was a mistake, that he should have promoted from within. So you might want to tread lightly at first. Until they come to value your contributions as much as he does. Thank you. Always good to have a sense for what you're walking into. I just thought you ought to know. I appreciate it. Starfleet has assigned us a high-priority mission to the Hotari region. I'll let the captain brief you on board. I know he's eager to see you. Will we be mission ready in time? We have every intention. The crew has been working around the clock to get the ship ready. There's still so much to do. that. I thought that thing was totally fried. Nothing to it, Nelly. And not a moment too soon. The boss wants us down in engineering. Like, now. in zero G. You're welcome. Carter Diaz. Engineering. I heard the new EXO just arrived. Won't be long before we get underway. I just hope whatever Chovak called us down for, it's something good. I can never tell with him. I'd rather not end up degaussing plasma manifolds. Hanging upside down makes me queasy. You and me working together, we can tackle anything he throws at us. Your optimism is positively contagious. Like we got here before. Lieutenant Commander Chovak. We were just looking for you, Commander. Petty officers Ed Solar, Diaz, 
I was beginning to think you would be late. We are all hands on deck right now, which means if you are not at your post at the appointed time, I do not have someone to replace you. A point I have been forced to make to Petty Officer Edzelar on repeated occasions. So you're saying we're irreplaceable, Commander? That is one interpretation. Another would be that I would replace you if I could. You can interpret as you see fit. So, I don't suppose you wanted us down here to check in before we go off duty? Equip yourselves in EV suits to work on the exterior of the hull. I need you to tune the structural integrity field for optimal performance. The subspace distortions and ionic interference we are experiencing are preventing the proper calibration. But this ship must be ready to depart shortly, despite the storm. The precise nature of these disturbances are not fully understood. But many systems have been affected by the wide band of emissive activity. How concerned should we be about the storm? Uh, are you worried? Vulcans do not worry. We calculate the variables and take appropriate precautions to mitigate the risk. Right now, that entails making critical preparations, because long-range sensors show that these disturbances will be more severe at our destination, the Hotari system. You have your orders. Do not delay. Yes, Commander Trobok. All hands on deck. Oh, uh, what's that? All hands on deck. That's what Chobok said. You know what that means? It means this ship isn't ready to go out and the brass know it. So they're throwing every warm body at it. And they're going to leave on schedule. Consequences be damned. It all comes down to us, Nilly. We're the ones who will get it ready. I know what we can do. But this isn't just any old refit or any old relaunch. Oh, oh. Huh. Excuse me. A lot of new faces coming on board. It's got to be tough coming as a replacement. That's for sure. They seem all right. Something that happened six months ago while they were off on another ship? Well, that's nothing to hold against them. Yeah, you're right. I guess getting a little new blood on board doesn't hurt. Hold on. Now there's an old face I didn't expect to see again. Hey, Miranda! You weren't gonna leave without me, were you? Miranda, you're here? We thought you were staying on the Adirondack. Transfer came in at the last minute, so I figured I'd slum it on this bucket of bolts. Looks like you got her back together pretty nicely. I wasn't sure what to expect. Don't talk badly about one of the best ships in all of Starfleet. We've rebuilt enough of her by now. She better be one of the best. We'll see about that. But... I am glad to be here. He still owes me a bottle of Saurian brandy. Don't think I forgot. Oh yeah, it's coming back to me now. Maybe Carter can rustle up that bottle and we can give you a proper welcome. As soon as we wrap up this quick little spacewalk. Here, let me help you. Thanks. So what's the word? Are you back in the security rotation? Yep. Still running with the usual suspects. Oh. Good to go. See you on the other side. Activating magnetic souls.
Captain Solano should be here momentarily. You'll have to forgive me, I don't know much about Kobliads. But my understanding is you need a steady supply of Duridium to keep your cell structure stabilized, or bad things start to happen. And we have plenty of Duridium in sickbay, so there's no risk of running out. Thank you. Feel free to make yourself at home. And help yourself to whatever you like from the Replicator. Just a sip of something. Rack the Gino. That sure has a kick. Jara Rydeck. Last time I saw you, it was graduation from the Academy. You'd already secured one of the most prestigious assignments possible. And you were burning with enough ambition to fuel seven trips around the Necrot Expanse. It's good to see you again, Captain. I could not be happier to have you on the Resolute. The only regret is that we couldn't provide you with a warmer welcome. The arrival of a first officer to her new ship deserves a bit of fanfare. But, unfortunately, we've had our hands full with the refit. You can spare me the pomp and circumstance. There's plenty of work to be done without all that. You always had a work ethic like nothing I'd ever seen. That's just what this ship needs at the moment. As I'm sure you've heard, we've had a rough go of it these last six months. The ship suffered some damage, but not nearly as much as the crew. I heard that you had an equipment malfunction. Is that what they're calling it? No, that's... that's just someone being generous. If anything, it was a leadership malfunction. We were on the verge of a major scientific breakthrough. A quantum leap forward in warp core technology. 10,000 teradynes per second. The ability to travel at a sustained greater speed longer and faster than we ever dreamed. What would have been the crowning achievement of my career? Right there. Within our grasp. <sighs> Until it all went so horribly wrong. We pushed her too hard, and a warp core malfunction overloaded the system, creating a pressure gradient way beyond what the ship could handle. <sighs> it was heartbreaking. We lost some of our best people. As captain, I have to take full responsibility. It was my decision to make. And I have to live with the consequences. You have to look to the future. You can't dwell on the past. On things you can't change. There's nothing that can be done about it now. <clears throat> In my defense, I will say... I might have avoided the whole ordeal if my senior staff had been willing to trust me. There was a lot of pushback from my former XO. I, I think that cost me his confidence. I don't want you to pull any punches. Certainly not on my account. But once we decide on a course of action, I need everyone to fully commit to the mission. Anything short of that just won't work. And that's when things start to go sideways. Whether I agree or disagree, I can promise that I'll be honest to a fault. Well, good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But at the end of the day, it has to be my call. Look, I'll be blunt. We can't afford another mistake. Or at least, I can't. I feel like my career is hanging in the balance here. We need a win. Something to restore the crew's confidence. I understand. On a more positive note, 
Starfleet has tasked us with what they're calling a mission of the highest priority. Escorting a senior diplomat to Hotari space. Two previously peaceful and otherwise non-aggressive civilizations now find themselves on the brink of all-out war. So it's a peacekeeping mission. I see it as a golden opportunity to not only prove what the Resolute and her crew are truly capable of, but also a mission for which we're uniquely qualified. This ionic storm. Our long-range sensors suggest it's several orders of magnitude stronger than anything on record. A total anomaly like nothing we've seen before. And you'll never guess where it leads. Hatari. Exactly. Very nearly in the precise location where we're headed. Where I imagine the interference will be exponentially greater. But the diplomat will brief us on the details of the rendezvous. Who is the senior diplomat we're escorting? That I don't know. Starfleet hasn't said. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I expect we'll have some rough sledding when we arrive, so I need you to prepare the crew for the worst. There's just one more thing I want to clarify up front. The metric that, for me, will be the ultimate measure of your success. What is it? If, after serving as my first officer, you don't one day find yourself with a ship of your own, then I will consider it my personal failure. When that might happen is entirely up to you. But it goes without saying, you have my full support. It's been a dream of mine since before I can remember. So I would be honored to become a captain someday. As long as you're willing to do the work, you have my promise. I'll do everything in my power to see that it happens. Thank you. Come. Let me introduce you to the crew. Cap run inside the ship. Everyone, if I could have your attention for a moment, I'd like to introduce Commander Jara Rydak, our new first officer. Some quick introductions. This is Lieutenant Handar, our helmsman, one of the best in the business. One of? Well, what he lacks in humility, he more than makes up for in ability. A pleasure to meet you, Commander. Likewise. Next, we have Commander Westbrook, our chief science officer. I've come to rely on his expert counsel on a regular basis. Pleasure. Commander Rydak, it is such an honor to meet you. This is our tactical officer, Lieutenant Bedrosian, who's been looking forward to meeting you for about as long as I can remember. I've been following your career for quite some time, and I look forward to learning as much as I can from you. That's very kind of you to say. I'm happy to be here. Well, I have to admit, one of the reasons I've followed your career is because you're part Kobliad, because of what you've overcome. Starfleet stands up for people who can't defend themselves, and you were one of those people once. But since then, you've done so much to protect others who need it. I really admire that. So, you've been something of an inspiration to me. Not that I've done anything close to what you've done. I don't know what to say. That's incredibly flattering, thank you. I hope someday I can follow in your footsteps. I'm sure you will. And then, of course, you've already met Commander Ermont. Please, do everything you can to make Commander Rydek feel at home here. I'll be on the Starbase. I have an urgent meeting with the Starbase commander to get our authorization to get underway. If they drag their feet any longer, we won't make our rendezvous. The bridge is yours. <clears throat> Commander, Chief Engineer Chovak needs to lower the structural integrity field. He's sent a crew out to recalibrate the emitters in response to the danger posed by the storm. We just need your go-ahead. Permission granted. Lowering structural integrity field, now. Entering maintenance mode. 
condition blue. The storm is getting worse. Looks like they turned off the SIF. Great. Let's get to that emitter. we're out here, I half expect to see her in pieces again. She's still got some scars on her. It has character. When I joined Starfleet, all I wanted was a ride out of town. But this isn't exactly how I pictured it. On the outside of the ship? <laughs> no. Sometimes it feels like we're just part of the machinery. Don't you want more than that? I mean... Starfleet is noble and all, but it's still a machine. A massive, massive machine. I am more than that. And so are you. You wanted to get away. I enlisted because I didn't want to wait years just to get out and see the galaxy. I wanted to go somewhere, see new worlds, look up at a sky no one's ever seen before. Just because I'm cranking a hyperspanner up in a Jeffrey's tube today doesn't mean that's all I'll ever be. Diaz to Commander Chovak. We are at the SIF emitter. Acknowledged. You may proceed with the recalibration. Calibration. Looks good. That wasn't so hard. Commander Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Yes, I am the Chief Science Officer. And I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. What a very impressive list of credentials. This is a research and discovery ship. First and foremost, now with a former tactical officer as its new first officer. I'm curious, though. A Kobliad, or half in your case, is an odd choice for first officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation, and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would happen then? You'd leave Captain Solano without an XO. Granted, that would be a worst-case scenario. But not outside the realm of possibility. That's very kind of you to be concerned about my well-being. But you don't need to trouble yourself on my account. I'll be fine. Well, I wouldn't say I was concerned. Just curious, that's all. Listen. Can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but... the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew. And he was one of my closest friends. So I can only hope that you'll live up to expectations. I don't think I could ever replace Commander Sutherland. And it would be a mistake to even try. Seeing as Captain Solano is on the Starbase, let me give you an update on this ion storm we're flying into. It's unusual, unlike anything I've ever seen. 
At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. Just a moment. We've got a massive energy wave inbound on screen. Tracing its trajectory. Starbase docking clamps are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wide-band burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities all over the sh- Red alert! Aye. <coughs> Evacuating main gangway and retracting. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct hit. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can weaken the impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shields. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. Petrosian, get those shields up. Rerouting power to shields. Stand by. I need a heading. We've only got one shot. Understood. On my command. Heading locked. Raise shields. This is it. All hands, brace for impact. supercharge the plasma, forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance. And you blow out every primary system on the ship. Just tell us where you need us. I need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port nacelle plasma regulator. We've reached the first access point. Understood. Do you see the override for the level one failsafe circuits? Engage the override. It should allow us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown. engaged. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other. Dears to Resolute. The failsafes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. Heads up, Carter. What is that? One of the discharges coalesced. It's coming right toward us. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser.
that damaged your suit. Energy dampening is down to 60%. the regulator. Opening the access panel. I am now halting the EPS flow to the port nacelle. We have little time before it causes an overload in the engine. You must work efficiently. Lines to the port warp engine are back in balance. Almost done. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, chill luck can... There's a problem. The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Put them through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. All right, Starbase. We're on it. Acknowledged. Commander, hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull, which theoretically will repel the docking clamps. And repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Chara? Captain, you brought me here because you trusted me. Can you trust me now? You better be sure you make the right decision. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There is protocol. And there are lives. We're going to blow the bolts. Starbase, stand by. We'll warn our crew to take cover. Get it done, Rydeck.
repair crew. This is acting Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, you have more micro debris incoming. Find cover. Cover? Lily! Get under the access panel! It's armored with uranium! But what about you? Harder! Maybe we can both fit behind this. Critical condition. We are moments from primary system failure. I got it. has changed. You are at risk of triggering a substantial electromagnetic arc to approach the main hull the way you came. But Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. There is an auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edsilar there to access the interior. Roger that. Go in there now. auxiliary hatch. Carter! I'm okay. I'm okay. But 
That's so long. Here, let me help you. Medical. We've got one wounded at my location. Millie. Oh, man. We'll see you at sick bay. Status report. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermott? The Resolute suffered damage from the exploding bolts. But we've successfully moored to the station. The ship is secure. Our systems are coming back online, but we have a fair amount of repairs before we're ready to go. Put a halt on the roll-off of Starbase Engineering staff. We have a schedule to keep. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. What a debacle. I was caught with my pants down. Not even on my own ship when the wave hit. I had to go running out of the Starbase Commander's office just to... <sighs> but you followed my order. I appreciate that. Hell, I'm relieved. I did it because it was the right thing to do at the time. It's protocol for a reason. That doesn't make this better, Jara. But you see my problem, don't you? They... they were all against me on that bridge. And they were ready to go against my orders. I'm not blind to it. If there are any problems, I'll keep them in line. At least I can count on you. Oh. Drink? Sure. Thank you. Your predecessor, Commander Sutherland, is missed. But for all the adoration of the crew, including the senior staff. I just couldn't rely on him. He would question, undermine me in front of the crew. I sometimes think they still hear his voice. That sort of thing is a way of lingering. And you can't argue with a ghost. Captain, perhaps you and the crew would be better served if you look at this mission as a fresh start. Never really leave the past behind. If we don't, you can never move forward. Now, this won't be easy. But I'm glad I have you here with me. Glad to be here, Captain. And despite it all, we've got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermott, we'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and then we'll set out for Hotari. Yes, sir.
On second thought, better to keep my wits about me. Of course. All departments reporting full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment, right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate could sell it as a drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that. Captain on the bridge. Sit. Sit, everyone. You all know, I'm not big on speeches. We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. Docking clamps released. Thrusters ahead, Mr. Hendar. Hi, Captain. You know what? You take this one. Me? Helm, make way. Thank you. I'm fine. Really, I, uh... You don't look so good. I have to get to sickbay. Go. Well, that was quite a scare. A few minutes more and it would have been one of the shortest tenues on record for a first officer. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on her, but she'll live. Just needs rest. You should worry about yourself. Your deridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. My name is Dr. Aram Duval, Chief Medical Officer. To be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're... Rare. I know. I was going to say special. Your people's numbers have dwindled, despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the Deridium you need to survive. 
yet you joined Starfleet and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. Maybe even a burden at times. It does make me unique, but it's not a burden at all. I'm honored to be Kobliad, to represent my people. As you should be. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable risks. Not when the lives of your crew are at stake. My professional opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. He's overstressed, operating in the pressure cooker of his own mind. Which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. What concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. Breakthrough discovery. The major innovation. Something he can put his name on. I hear you. But that's my job, isn't it? To make sure that doesn't happen. And we don't lose sight of the bigger picture. Which is exactly why I'm so glad you're here. We need you now more than ever. I have to admit, I was concerned. when I heard what happened on the reef. You just followed Solano's orders despite having better options in front of you. Huh. I guess word travels fast around here. It's a small ship, and everyone's curious about the new XO. Fortunately, your cell structure is almost completely stabilized. And I'll spare us both the lecture, but I do feel it's my responsibility to remind you, without regular infusions of deridium, you will not live. It's as simple as that. Understood. Then, my work here is done. Lieutenant Bedrosian. I came to see if you were okay. We were all pretty worried on the bridge. No one knew what was happening. I'm feeling much better. Thank you. It's just part of who I am. You don't have to explain to me. I understand. I'm just glad you're okay. You trusted me earlier with the shields, and I appreciated that. I want you to know that I have your back. Thank you. Complete the diagnostic sequence, and this shuttle will be cleared for service. Yes, sir. The storm in the Hotari region will interfere with our transporters. So we need all available shuttlecraft in working order. Excuse me, Commander Trovac. Petty Officer Maris. I will leave you to your work. I stopped by sick bay and saw Nilly. I figured you'd want to know. Did she say anything about... Is she mad at me for going in the hatch first? She had some choice words. I tried to smooth things over, but... I think you're gonna have to make things right with her yourself. Dr. Duval said she'll be back on duty soon, though. Come on. I have to run the final diagnostic. I can't stay long. I've got a long to-do list before we get to Hotari, and things are piling on faster than I can check them off. We're making all our last-minute checks in security, too. Hey, you don't have to keep me company. If you got things to do, go do them. No, no. I'm here because of my to-do list. Oh? There are some things that never seem to have the right time. So, why not now? I had a chance to think about this while I was away. Then, you and Millie almost got killed out on the hall. And I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you. Instead of tiptoeing around it, 
or worse. Now, this is just a guess, but you like me. Is that what this is? How'd you know? Must have been pretty obvious. Which is funny, because it kind of came out of nowhere for me at first. Well, you know, I was hoping. I guess that makes this a little easier to say. We've been really good friends for a long time. I want to see if there's more between us than just being friends. You don't have to explain it. I feel the same way. There is something between us. So, do you want to find out what that something is? If it's there for you, and it's there for me... Are you kidding me? I just said yes. <laughs> I wanted to be sure I heard that right. These are uncharted territories. I'd call it a chemistry experiment. You know, with us. Inquiring minds are gonna want to know about this, so... Do you tell Nilly, or do I? I wouldn't worry about that. Level one diagnostic complete. I have to get back to that to-do list. They're probably looking for me. Can't blame them. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Approaching the rendezvous point outside Atari space. Helm, bring us out of warp. Dropping to impulse. Ionic interference surging, Captain. Shield integrity holding. We can take it. We are at the correct coordinates to meet the shuttle. Commander Rydek, find us our diplomat, if you will. Aye, Captain. Let's reduce the noise. Filter out environmental signals. I can manually tune what's left for Federation signal types. I've located the shuttle. Opening comms. On screen. Shuttle to Resolute. Shuttle to Resolute. Debris field. Lost maneuvering. Losing. I can't get it any clearer. We won't get a transporter lock. It's just not happening. Power up the tractor beam. We'll pull them directly into the docking bay. Diaz, you good to run the tractor emitter? Yes, sir. Come on, Diaz. First thing, lock onto the shuttle and stabilize the rotation. Debris. I'm on it.
gonna take out the shuttle. Dia's the bridge. There's a large piece of debris headed for the shuttle. The tractor beam can't handle it. Can our shields take it? I believe so. Commander Ryder, plot an intercept course. On it. Here we go. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17, 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. Got it. Whoa! Someone's working hard on the bridge. Shuttlecraft on board. Good job. We're on our way down to meet them. Terra firma, so to speak. Ambassador Spock. Captain, we'll be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. Apologies for the landing, Ambassador. I was operating the tractor beam, sir. I take responsibility. Our arrival was the smoothest part of our journey. Your artistry with a tractor beam is commendable. We thought we were prepared for our arrival in Hotari space, but it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity. The storm has been pretty intense. There was an element that was most unusual. Before you came to our aid, our maneuvering thrusters and impulse engines were rendered inoperable. So we attempted a short traversal at warp speed, only to find that we could not achieve warp at all, even though our diagnostics computer showed no faults or anomalies. What do you make of that? When all indications say that warp speed is possible, but in practice, we find it is not. I'd rather investigate than speculate. A sound principle. Take readings, run some additional diagnostic checks, and we'll get to the bottom of this. Quite logical, Petty Officer... Carter Diaz, sir. Thank you. Ambassador Spock. Excuse me. I'm honored to have you aboard. I'd like to get right to it. We're already behind. Ambassador Spock, my senior staff. It's not every day that a captain gets to welcome a Starfleet legend aboard. Hmm. 